Raver spoke here, um, and we had raving reviews from everybody. I think there's probably in the, probably at least the top two as far as feedback on speakers that we've had. So I'm excited to have him come back out and speak again and bring some incredible value. So Kyle, come on out, man. All right. Okay, so I've got to get I've got to get this set up. So I guess since I was since I was top two in raving reviews, who was number one? And how do I be that this year? How do I? I guess we can talk about that while I set this up. It was me. Oh, it was you. Uh, yeah. Okay, so I'm out. I guess. Oh, good. This is going to be easy. So who was here last time that that I spoke? Some of you, and you're all back. So I'm going to assume that you're back because of me. I know some of you, you got golden keys, right? But I'm not going to count that. I'm going to assume that you're here because of me. And so if, if you guys, for those of you that don't know me, uh, there's no reason that you should, since you haven't heard me speak yet. But I, I am a former student pastor turned roofing company guy, turned web developer, and now social media person expert whatever title people want to give me and so what what i love to do is help you leverage what i believe to be the most difficult part of your business which is how you market yourself right because if we're if we're just being honest and frank i'm trying to open up my clicker so that i can do this the right way if we're not careful we all think that we suck does anybody anybody feel like that like we, we spend all of our time, and maybe this is just me, and we'll just have a counseling session for my insecurities. But, but I spend all of my time, if I'm not careful, looking at everyone else and going, man, if I, if I could just do what she does, like, man, I'd be so awesome. And if I look like Mike, pff, duh, I'd be incredible. Right? If, if I could sell like Steven, man, I would be so much better. And all we do is walk around upselling the gifts of others. And downplaying the gifts that we have and when we do that we walk around in a business that looks like everyone else's does anybody know how many real estate licenses there are in DFW oh. who, who what'd you say 36. so 36,000 I heard the other day 62,000 oh, wow. now 36,000 made <coughs> active agents it was a year yeah. right but 62,000 active real estate licenses in DFW. It's crazy. I came before here. I was in Oklahoma. There's like 4,000. Now, there's only like 11 people that live there, right? So it's different. But there's 62,000 real estate licenses walking around this city doing exactly what you do. And, and let's be honest with ourselves. You all do the same thing, Right? You sell houses to people. Now, right, we can get kind of defensive and go, whoa, 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 bro. I'm different. You are in different areas, but what you do for a living is the same. Yet, what I watch across this industry is everyone pitching the exact same reasons as to why I'm better. Right? And, and I watch it in the mortgage industry. I watch it in the title industry. And, and all we do is stand up here and I convince you why mortgages are important, right? Basically, my sales pitch was like, you should use a mortgage. You need one. Thank you. <laughs> and then I just hope that I get all your business when I gave you no reason to truly choose me over somebody else. So this is where this curriculum came from. So this is called Master Your Story. And is that, is that can we get that? <coughs> Maybe. Does it look clear? Maybe I need glasses. <laughs> no, I should tell me I need to go get my eyes Okay, cool. So I wrote this curriculum because of the problems that I was experiencing inside of this industry. And so what we're going to walk through is, as a movie buff, I love movies. And I, I'm kind of a snob. Like, I love to hate certain movies, and I love to love certain movies. And, and as I walk through like why do I love certain movies but why do I hate certain movies there's very specific reasons and and what I discovered was there's a direct correlation between the way we like a movie 
and the way we can present ourselves to others to be attractive, appealing, and remembered. And, and that is the goal. So, so it starts with, with this right here. So this is a, this is a triangle that, that I came up with. And, and here's how this happened. December of 17, I, 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 was, I owned a company that built websites for real estate agents. And I literally woke up one morning and was like, why do I do this? I hate it. <laughs> you ever done that? Like you woke up and you just hated what you're doing? Well, I took action and I fired myself as president of my own company that day. Right? Maybe not the right action. My wife was not happy, but I did it. And I gave up my salary and I said, God, I want to coach and teach and inspire and encourage people. And so I got all excited. And once the excitement wore off, I was like, oh my gosh, what am I going to actually teach people? And this is where this triangle came from. And so I want to quickly walk us through it, and, and I'll provide you guys, whether I send it to China or to Rebecca, I have a whole four-week curriculum that I've written and had copyrighted, so you can't steal it. But, but I want y'all to have it, so I'll send it to you guys so y'all can all have it. And, and it breaks this down, right? So here is how I win on social media. But here's the problem. Most of us want to live up here. We want every post we do, every video we do, to sell a house. And that's not real life. And, and, and we want to work up it here without having ever earned the right to cast vision to people. Because none of you guys care about my vision until you know me. <coughs> and none of you are influenced by me until I've provided you a reason to believe in my influence. Yet we just think we can show up and instantly have it. So we've got to start with engagement. Engagement on social media takes a million forms, most of which are very elementary. Because it could be a post as stupid as, are you a cat or dog person? Comment your emoji. Right? We all go, really, bro? Like, this is where we're at right now? <laughs> this is who Mike brought in? Like, we're talking about cats and dog emojis? But when we understand the way Facebook works, when we understand the way the algorithm functions, it's all about engagement. The algorithm isn't going, no, that's about cats and dogs. That's not professional. We're not going to let that help you win. The algorithm goes, holy crap. How'd you get 500 comments? The algorithm doesn't know that it's 500 cats and dog emojis. And, and what it's doing is, as your engagement increases, you're, you're upping the amount of people that are going to see your next post. So I will do stupid posts at times just to increase engagement because I know my next post is gonna be something that's gonna be worthy of someone buying. Whereas most people just post buy, 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 and we wonder why six weeks later, no one's liking our stuff anymore. So we've gotta be willing to engage, right? You guys talked about having a suite at the Mavs game, right? It, you can engage through sports, you can engage through topics, right? There's a million different ways to create engagement. But this is the baseline of everything we do, is getting people to engage, right? Mike, we spent a lot of time talking about that when you were posting in some of the big national groups, right? We were talking about why it's important for me to comment on that video, because it's helping you, right? Engagement. Then we move to value. Value is where people start to actually pay attention to our content. Value can come in multiple forms, right? It, it could be literally, like one of the things that I do is I read the, the Bible app, not every day. I wish I did, but I'm not, I'm not a perfect Christian person. That's why I'm a former pastor, right? <laughs> so, and we have grace. That's why grace exists. Right? So I can drink whiskey and still go to heaven one day. Right? Is that on video? <laughs> they can't see that. I'm cut just that. Just that. Just that. It'll not be me. Blur my face and my body. My body is hot. So, I can't believe I said that. Anyway. So, value for me. I post scripture a lot. And in my mind, like, I think people that believe like I believe, like, read the same thing I read. Yet I run into people all the time, they're like, man, thank you so much for the scripture you post. It's so encouraging. And I want to go, you don't like to read it yourself? No, I just depend on you to post it in the morning. <laughs> it's crazy how simple it is to add value when it flows through what we're already passionate about. Right? But we hear the word value, 
and your mind instantly goes, oh, well, then I need to be talking about mortgage rates, and I need to be talking about the new neighborhood that's popping up. Nobody cares. That's not value, okay? Real value that real people wake up thinking about is where that starts. Then and only then do we begin picking up influence. Influence is now where people are actually paying attention. Influence is now where people are actually sharing and commenting on your, your content. All right, so, so that's an obvious way of knowing that you're becoming a person of influence is are the things that you're doing beginning to be shared by other people? Then and only then can we start casting vision to people. And this is why we all mess up is because we try to do that first before anyone is ready to listen. And it lands on deaf ears. Am I making sense so far? Your computer doesn't. Boom. What? <laughs> Man. Man, is that a video? <laughs> that was awesome. Then, we create walking ambassadors. And here's what's so cool about this. In my opinion, walking ambassadors, most of the time, are people you've never worked with. Think about it. We think to get referrals, we have to first have had clients because referrals come from clients. So many of my referrals come from people that have never technically worked with me. They're people from when I was a pastor that just trust me implicitly and they know whatever Kyle touches, I trust it because I trust him. Right? Some of my biggest fans don't need me for anything but they've referred me more times over than I can even remember. <coughs> They're walking ambassadors. The minute they hear the word marketing or social media, they're like, oh my gosh, Kyle, do you know Kyle? Like they can't get me off the tip of their tongue fast enough. We all have the ability to have people like that. Some of you probably already can think of those people that like they're listening for the term real estate to just come up in any airwave. And they're so fast to pounce and go, do you know Mike? Because they just love Mike. It's weird. And that term came from a book called The Code. No, I'm saying not weird for you. Right? But just, it's weird how people get that way with all of us. Right? Not you. You're, you're not weird. Right? You're super normal. This term came from a book called The Go-Giver. If any of you haven't, haven't read it, The Go-Giver by John, by, by Michael David Mann or something like that, and Bob Berg. Bob Berg is the guy I remember the most. And it's a super short book for people that are bad readers like myself. And, and when we follow this pyramid, things begin to work where they haven't worked before. And, and so we'll, that'll break more down into the, in the content that I have. So what, what I want to do is, is very quickly walk us through how to tell a great story. Because I was, I was reading a book. There's a guy named Donald Miller. That, that writes a lot of books about telling your story, branding yourself. And, and he talked about how the average person spends 30% of their life daydreaming. Isn't that interesting? 30% of our lives daydreaming. And he said what also fits into that 30% of our lives is listening to people tell stories. Because it fills the same position in our brains that the daydreaming does. And that's why we love stories. That's why most of us would say, oh, you do Facebook Live? Oh, don't do it more than five minutes. People don't have an attention span for that. Yet you went to a two hour movie yesterday, right? So it's not that we don't have the attention span, it's what's being talked about, what's the story being told, and do I have a desire to listen? And so what I decided was in every great movie, it has these five parts, right? Every great movie has a good introduction. It, it sucks you in right away. I, I can think of movies that I turned off 10 minutes in, and then a friend of mine goes, oh man, at like the 25 minute mark, it gets so good. Well, you should have made it good at the 10 minute mark, because that's all <coughs> right? And, and, and I didn't see the, what was a good movie because they didn't suck me in fast enough. All right, then it goes to character development. Good movies develop characters that you feel an invested interest in or that you see yourself in. 
Movies that don't have good character development aren't good movies. Then, in every great movie, there's conflict. And I know we all wish we lived in this world where conflict didn't exist. And for anybody that has young kids, like, think about some of the movies like we let our kids watch. About like children being kidnapped. And we're like, oh yeah, that's a great movie, three-year-old. You should watch this. <laughs> Right? Or about the, the pay, like the, the old couple and up, like they like dying. Right? And we're like, oh yeah, it's incredible, it's awesome. The balloons, the house, the float. I can't fit. <laughs> awesome. We've got to have conflict, right? Nothing is worth having without having gone through conflict to get it. And so that's a huge, a huge part. Then there's the turning point. That's where we begin to see, okay, I see what you're doing, right? Like they broke up. She goes to Paris on a foreign exchange trip. He's there on vacation. They meet under the Eiffel Tower. They're both different. And they're going to fall. Right? Like, we see that turning point beginning to happen in, in great movies. Other movies, we never see it. And the moment we think we have it, we don't. And that's what keeps us coming back. Right? And then the big why is revealed. Right? The ultimate reason as to why that movie, that character even exists is for that big reveal at the end or somewhere in that movie. So, so these are the five pieces of a movie that, that I've pulled from. What is happening right now? Man. And, and what I want to do is I have ten questions that I want to ask you guys. And we're going to get a little deep today. There will be tears in the room from a few of you. Right? So the highly emotional ones, like just get ready. You're going to be emotional. The, those of you that are tough and rugged, I'm going to come at you hard, and we'll see if we can get through that, that alligator skin of yours. So here's the first question. Who are you? There are so many realtors that I know that all I know about them is the brokers they work for and how many units they've sold this year. Like that's it. Because that's all they talk about. And they never talk about themselves <coughs> as an actual person. And so what this should look like for you is, right, are you a mom? Are you a dad? Are you a brother? Are you a sister? Are you a spouse? Are you an avid sports fan? Are you an avid fisherman? Are you an avid Pinterest person? Like, who are you? How do the different pieces of your life break up? And, and what does that look like for you? Because what we're doing, right, is, is I'm going to expose to you the different areas <coughs> of your lives that you're not talking about to attract people. Right? Stephen, who's in the back of the room. Right? Stephen and I met a year and a half ago. Yeah. Something like that. Mm -hmm. And the first thing that drew us to one another was the fact that we both used to be pastors. The moment I said it, and he came up to me and goes, dude, I used to be instantly, we're connected, right? Because instantly, I know his darkest day, because he had terrible days dealing with teenagers, as have I, <laughs> right? Like, we know things about each other without even knowing each other, because we aligned ourselves with one of the greatest passions from our, from our previous lives now. That's how this works, right? There's other people in this room that we will connect on, on another level. When y'all talked about the suite at the, at the at American Airlines Center, I turned to Mike and was like, I want to go. <laughs> because I'm a diehard sports fan. And the moment I say something about the Cowboys losing, right, and we could go there, and I'm not going to go there right now because then I'll cry. <laughs> Those of you that feel the same way as me, Instantly know we could go over into that corner and we spend that four hours together ticked off at what should and shouldn't have happened. Right? But we assume that doesn't matter. When in my opinion it's all that does. Okay? So so really identify who are you in, in the different pockets of your life. And, and then the next thing is, what are you about? All right, so now this is getting into the character development piece. Within all of the answers to who are you, this question should now be answered for each one of those, right? So, so you're a mom. Awesome. 
What are you about as a mom? Like, what fires you up about being a mom? What are you passionate about because you're a mom? Right? What, what does that look like for you? you, you, you we, whatever that looks like, you, you have to be able to break that down and, and understand that. Because these are giving you all of your talking points, right? Ember, before we, we started, she told me her goal this year is to do four to five live videos a week. Well, guess what? That can't be filled with house after house content because that will annoy the crap out of everyone. So she's got to have different talking points, right? She's got to be able to come from different perspectives to attract different people. And here's what we got to do that I should have said earlier. You have to give yourself permission to not attract everyone. I think we spend so much time trying to create content that everyone likes, which in turn no one cares about because it's so vanilla, right? So it would be like me, like early on in my speaking career, I had people say, man, you can't talk about God when you're in front of people because you're going to rub people the wrong way. And I'm like, yeah, that's true. I just don't care. Right? Because the minute I start going, you know, there's something in the universe, I've cheapened what I have and who I am. And now I'm no longer attracting the people that I would have originally attracted. Does this make sense? So, so we've got to give ourselves permission to not attract everyone. You can't sell a house to every walking human in DFW. You can't. So stop trying to attract them all. Just decide what you're about and let that dictate the content you push forward to attract certain people. Right? This is why if, if you love working with boomers, right? So you maybe it's because you are a boomer or, or for whatever reason, but, but you love working with the boomer, right? The, the baby's finally moved out and they're downsizing. So you're getting the big transaction and a little bit smaller transaction. You don't need to go be on Instagram. Like, give yourself permission to not be on Instagram and quit buying all the hype of every marketing guru in the world that's like, what? You're not on Instagram? Do you want to make money in 2019? Because that's stupid. 20% of boomers are on Instagram, where 70% of them are on Facebook. Right? So you've got to give yourself permission to be in front of the right people <coughs> and then let the ones that aren't that don't care for it, just let them go on by and be committed to who you want to be in front of, okay? Any, any questions so far? Okay, the third question. Who in your life has helped you get to this point? One of the things that I love about, about social media is, is doing interviews, right? The day Mike and I met, we did an interview together for his, for his show. And I just love that style of communication because, number one, I just don't think people want to hear what I have to say that much. So I'd rather pull other people in that are really actually smart and better looking than me, right, and, and, and let them speak to my audience. And can you imagine, like, can, can anybody think to, like, when I ask this question, does anybody have right away, like, one person that comes to your mind? Who? Who would you say? <clears throat> Lots, lots of so who has who, who has one person right away? Not that that's the only one, but an obvious one that came to your mind. My father. Your father. Is he still alive? No. Okay, so that's kind of hard for where I'd like to go next. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you can't interview him, right? But you could do an incredible video speaking to what he instilled in you, right? And, and, and now everyone that watches it, number one, whose father is no longer with us, instantly connects. But then in general, anyone who had a father worthy of imitating, alive or not alive, is going to instantly fall in love with that video, right? You would sell real estate because of that video, even though that video would technically have nothing to do with real estate, even though at the same time it technically has everything to do with real estate because you're a human who is also a real estate agent at the same time. Right? Mm -hmm. You're always all of them. You don't meet somebody at Target that says they need a house and you go, oh, I'm sorry, it's after five. <laughs> so I'll get back to you tomorrow. No, we don't do that. You're jumping in sales mode right there in the middle of Target. 
<laughs> right? That, that's how it works. So, so think about who this is, right? What if for somebody, what if this was a high school teacher? And what if you did an interview with that person? Because if now 10 years, 20 years, 30 years later, you're still remembering them, could they not also have an impact on your audience? And could that impact not lead to opportunity down the road for you to sell real estate? Absolutely. My most watched video of all time is still me interviewing my dad. Because my parents have an unbelievable story. And I won't go into it because we don't have time for that. I didn't talk about my business once in the video. I had a t-shirt on with the name of my business on it because I'm not an idiot. I sold more websites because of that video than any video I ever did trying to sell websites. Because people paid attention. Because it was powerful. It was based from story. And it was about debt. Which whether you have $100 of debt or a million dollars of debt. Like your debt's real to you and everybody relates. It was powerful. And it had nothing to do with me. It was all about who has helped me in life get to where I am. So think about those people and, and, and leverage how you can use those stories on social media. Does that make sense? Any questions? Okay. Next question is this. Who else is involved? This is right now. I, I run into people all the time. They're like, I, it was so great to meet, finally meet Lana, which is my wife. Because we see her on social media all the time. Right? It was when we met. Right? I heard about you. You heard about me. But we never found ourselves in the same room. And it's crazy now that through social media, you already feel like you know someone before you ever even physically shake their hand because of just the power of social media. And so who is in your life right now that you're not currently making a part of the story? I did a live video two nights ago sitting on my back porch that I knew at some point my children were gonna walk out there and interrupt my video. But I wanted them to. Because I wanted to take that moment in the middle of trying to sell to stop and love on my kids in the middle of a live real estate marketing video. Right? Now I wanted to fill in access, and now you're getting my secrets. But I did it on purpose, because if I didn't want them there, I would have gone somewhere else. Right? But how many people don't want that to happen? That's unprofessional. Like, please stop saying unprofessional. Now, yes, like, don't wear flip-flops to a closing, right? Like, that should probably be a rule. But in general, right, like, what part of being a father is unprofessional? I was at a, at a conference one time where the guy speaking answered his phone in the middle of the event because it was his son. And he said, 10 years ago, I committed to my family that even if I'm speaking, you always come first. And he answered his phone in the middle of a, of, a, of a keynote that he probably got paid 20 grand to be at. It's amazing what happens when, when we put the right things first and when we let them be a part of our story. Right? It's incredible. So, so think about like who else is involved in your life right now that, that you aren't currently involving. Like I would be doing a video, Mike, this week of you and your mother-in-law. Right? It's Mike and Tina, and, and you're telling the story, right? Because this doesn't exist without that, right? Because that's the beginning. And so instead of just doing another Mike Mazik video trying to recruit, tell the story of where it started and how grateful you are for that story to pick back up with her coming back in. It's incredible. People will pay attention to that story. So you're welcome for that. <laughs> okay? Any questions about this? Is this good so far? Yes. If it wasn't good, I didn't I guess I didn't really care. I'm still gonna go. Next question. What did you overcome to get to today? In this real estate industry, it is so fake and phony. Very few are willing to talk about the years that sucked because they don't want to look bad. Which is why, for new agents, new agents show up going, man, I'm going to kill it this year. No, you're not. 
<laughs> You're probably not. <laughs> Let's just be honest. <laughs> because this is hard. This is hard business. But nobody would know that because everyone just stands up and talks about, you know, I sold 100 houses this year and it was awesome. I took 11 vacations. But I'm not going to tell you about five years ago how I had to re I'd do a second mortgage on my house because it didn't pick up as fast as I thought it would. What have you overcome to get to today? And, and here's what I love about this. So did you guys know if, if you make $100,000 or up in a calendar year, you're in the top 1% of money earners in the entire world. You can Google it. If you don't believe me, Google it. Whatever's on Google is true. All right, so it's right out there. So here's what, what I've learned from this. 1% of the world is making over $100,000, which means 99% of people probably aren't where they want to be. So every time Steven speaks to his success, what percentage of people does that potentially frustrate? 99%. 99%. And though we would like to think that our friends celebrate us, they might to our face, but they're probably not at their dinner table. And then what I've found is, when we speak to success, which is what most real estate agents do, it's closing, it's closing picture after closing picture, listing video, closing picture, right? That blah, 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 that's all it is. 1% of people are going, yeah, way to go. But what percentage of, of us in this room have experienced pain? 100, mm -hmm. right? I don't think there's a pain-free person on the planet. <clears throat> And so when we speak from a place of pain, everyone listening can relate. Everyone. And it doesn't matter if you've experienced a greater level of pain than me. Pain is pain. And that's how we relate to people. And you just watch. The moment you begin to tell stories of pain, people will show up to listen. And it'll change the game for you. And so my kind of follow-up question to this that I don't have a slide for is, like, what pain have you kind of pushed down that you've looked at as a bad thing that could be the greatest advantage in your business in 2019? Because number one, if you've been afraid to talk about it, that means it also holds a, a, a much larger place in your life currently than it should. And it could be causing you to feel like a failure. It could be causing you to be reminded that you didn't measure up at some point, right? And, and it is there constantly serving as a negative in your ability to grow. Yet you just keep pushing it down and pushing it down and you think the next closing is gonna fix it and then the next closing is gonna <coughs> fix it. But it's not. And then the bonus, right? Like this is what I loved about pastoring is when I would speak to a young person that was, was going through, like dealing with their parents getting divorced, and they think it's their fault, yet it's not. And I would be able to say things like, hey, this does not make sense today. But one day, when you're an adult, you're gonna be able to help somebody whose parents are getting divorced because you've already won that battle. And, and, and the beauty of pain is when we get to see the pain that we suffered get paid forward to help someone else be removed from theirs. But most of us don't want to talk about it because we feel like we're going to get judged or people are going to think less of us. So just think about what that looks like for you. What, if, what have you overcome to get to today? and begin to talk about it, okay? Then the next question is, how'd you get through it? And, and here's how I want you to think about this. If, if you can think back to pain in your life and then you can attribute a person as the way you got through it, I figure out a way to get that person on your social media and y'all talk about it, right? And if you need help, I can help you sort through that. Like, that because that could turn into Jerry Springer probably real quick if uh, we, we didn't do it the right way right but if it was a person 
that served as your kind of saving grace, how are you repositioning yourself to be that for somebody else? What, what does that look like? For you to go be to someone what already was for you. If that's something that helped you get through it was a book or an article, right? Something like that. Go buy 50 of those things and give them out to people everywhere you go. Because that was your saving grace. And, and that book, right? This is how crazy the world is. That book will result in real estate transactions for you. Right? Like, let's not forget in the midst of what we're talking about, like, this is all about selling more real estate, right? I'm just going about it from a way that you've never even considered before. Because you can go keep buying more stuff and more marketing efforts, but nothing is better than just putting your true self out there for people to be attracted to. So, so answer that question, how did you get through it? Tell that story, talk about it, and, and go replicate it to the people around you, all right? And then the last few questions, what did you learn? Right, the only time pain is the worst is when the pain that I endured didn't help me learn anything. And then now I know God's gonna have to do it to me again. Right, <laughs> that's the part that sucks. So what'd you learn? In December, the, the biz, last December, the business that I fired myself from, it, it failed. We lost $600,000 in that business. And there were months that I was like, I'm the worst. And what I learned is I was the worst at certain parts of that, which is what I don't do in my new business. So much of what I'm able to do well now is because of what I sucked at a year ago. And for most of us, we can't bypass that season. And we need that season to get into the season that we're supposed to be in. So what did you learn? Right? All of you. Like, who's been in real estate over five years? <coughs> All of you should be doing a Facebook Live in the next 30 days that's called the 10 things I wish I knew about real estate when I started. You know what that video is called? Recruiting. Is, that, is there a benefit in, in the company to recruit? I already know the answer, so that's why I was asking that question. <laughs> of course there is. You know how you're not going to recruit people to go do a Facebook video asking people to come join your real estate team? You know how you do recruit people? Go create value where value may have not been created for you five years ago when you got into this industry and go create it for somebody else, right? Like, what's your name, bro? Charles. Charles, right? He's here because, what'd you say? You've already done a couple transactions. With, with the company, right? You're obviously not in this industry. And now all of a sudden, the wheels are turning. Man, could I do this? Would I be good at this? And it came over the course of two transactions, right? If you would have just recruited him the day y'all met, he's not going to show up in this room. That's not real life. That's not how it works. So, so be speaking constantly to what you're learning. If, if you read, does anybody read? <laughs> I know, I, I, I that. This is why I ask this question. Nobody reads. Like, I like to say that. I, now, I shouldn't say nobody, right? You're like, oh, well, I do. But in general, like, people don't read. To be a New York Times best-selling author, do you, you know how many books you have to sell? 20,000. You know how many people live in America? 360 million. Do you know the percentage of 20,000 out of 360 million? So we look at all these New York Times best-selling authors like, oh my gosh, you're incredible. They sold to 20,000 people out of 360 million. That's like a fraction of a fraction of a fraction of a percent. That's not successful in any industry. So what that shows me is that most people don't read. So if you read, jump on Facebook Live and tell people about what you're reading. Give them the Cliff Notes version that I bought in high school, right? Because I have the intention to read it, but I'd rather listen to Mike talk about it, right? It also, like you remember the videos you did about EXP, how, how fast that exploded, 
because that was a hot button topic that nobody understood, that nobody under like, and you were willing to just have an honest opinion about it. You spoke to the good, you spoke to the to what you didn't agree with, and it exploded because you were willing to give a personal perspective. People love our opinions. And we have to realize that. Your people care about your opinion. So what did you learn? What are you learning? And how are you leveraging that in the way you're approaching marketing yourself and your business in 2019? Okay, any questions? So no questions so far. So I'm either crushing it or I'm doing terrible. It's, it's either one of those two. We'll, we'll know in a little bit. The next question is this, what, what is your vision? What goals have you set for yourself in 2019? And, and how are you going about telling those to, to the people that you have around you? Right, I have friends, and some of you will know this person, so I won't say their name or anything else about them. But, but he <laughs> literally every day posts a picture of him in front of his goal wall begging for business and I cringe every time I see it because it's so sad <laughs> yet the same person has so many cool things going on in their life that they could be telling cool stories about yet out of laziness within that piece well this, this is just easier it's easier so why are you setting the goals that you're setting? What does that look like? And then how do you go tell those stories in a way that makes people want to jump on board and not run for the hills? <coughs> right? So it would be like for me, like I have goals for, for my new company, Empower Media, this year. And, and so instead of just telling people these goals, what if I were to put Harrison and Everly, my six and four year old, in mouse ears? And put them on Facebook and go, guys, here's the deal. My number of goals aren't really relevant to you, but, but here's what the Drapers are doing. If I hit my goals, Harrison and Everly are going to Disney World for the first time this summer. Does that make you want to help Harrison and Everly? Like, go experience? Like, do you want to be the reason that Harrison and Everly don't go to Disney World? <laughs> of course you don't. You're a terrible person. <laughs> And, and so when, when we cast vision the right way, people get excited for us. That's, that's how it works. But, but we've got to position it in a way that makes people want to get on board. And we can't just say it out loud one time and just hope and expect people to just all of a sudden throw transactions our way. So, so what is your vision? The next question is, is what is your UVP? Some people might say the USP, your unique value proposition. USP, your unique selling proposition. Why on earth, out of the 62,000 real estate licenses in DFW, why should I pick you? Your answer to that question is your UVP. You, you've gotta be able to think through how do you entice someone to want to know more, right? The way I kind of think of it is if you get on an elevator with somebody and in small talk, they're like, hey, what do you do? What you say in that 10 seconds is going to dictate your ability to market yourself. Because what most people say is, oh, I'm a real estate agent. And they're like, bye. <laughs> and you're like, dude, you push floor number eight. And you're like, oh, I meant to. Like they're gone. They're going to take the stairs the rest of the way up. Because they don't want to be on an elevator for six more floors with a real estate agent. So what do you say to people? How, how do you create value outside of, I'm going to sell it fast. My broker's awesome. I'm going to sell it for top dollar. We have great partners in mortgage and title. Blah, 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 blah. That should be true for everyone, right? Now, it's not, right, because we know that this is the best brokerage. But until they realize that, they currently think that wherever they are is the best. And so you're not doing anything to separate yourself. So, so discover what your unique value proposition is. 
when, when people ask me what I do, and I, I'm not perfect at it, but, but I had to come up with one. So, so what I tell people that, that I run into that I don't know is when they ask me, Kyle, what do you do? I tell them that I serve as the creative director of people's lives and business. What do you think their first word out of their mouth is? Uh, what? <laughs> when you say what, what did you just give me permission to do? Keep going. Right? If my answer was, well, I own a marketing company and we do SEO and we do Facebook ads and we do, bye. Right? They're gone. So I have to come up with a creative way to make you want to know more. Hence the sentence I came up with. So what does that look like for you? Think about how you're going to position yourself to be different. And, and then the, the last question is why do you do what you do? Why do you do what you do? And, and, and don't say, right, that, that I do what I do just to make money. Because though that may be true for you, there's reasons behind why making money is important. Like I don't have a problem with you saying because I want to make a lot of money. But let's get deeper. What does the a lot of money that you want to make allow you to do? Right? Because all of us are working from two places. We're either trying to provide a life for our family that we didn't have. Or we're trying to provide a life for our family that we did have and feel like we're not measuring up to. And neither one of them are wrong. We just have to understand where we're coming from. And, and then this has to be constantly in front of people. Right? So if you give 2% of, of your transaction to a nonprofit or whatever, speak to that. If that's something you're passionate about, let that be at the forefront of, of your business. And not from a place of like, look how great I am, I give to this soup kitchen. But, but from a place of, this is something I'm passionate about. And what does every soup kitchen need more of? Soup. Soup. They do need more soup. But they also need more hands that can serve the soup and more money that can pay for the soup that they didn't have. Right? And, and so we can do one of two things. Like, I cannot talk about it because I don't want people to think that I'm, like, using that to grow my business. Or I can realize I have influence. And exactly what this soup kitchen needs more of, I have the ability to bring them through my desire to storytell. And it's going to do both things. It's going to grow the soup kitchen, and it's going to allow me to attract the right type of people that want to work with me. Why do you do what you do? So I want to ask you guys, out of the, out of the 10 questions that we asked, what, what questions stood out to you the most that you've given the least amount of focus up to this point in your career? And there might be a moment of silence, right, for you to like look back. Some of you are like, dude, I really wouldn't listen. So I'm going to just sit here. But for the three of you that were listening. <laughs> what have you overcome to get here today? Yeah. Okay. Why, why that question over any of the others? Because I don't want to put on Facebook that I haven't sold a house in three months because who's going to want to buy a house from me if I can't sell a house? Sure. <laughs> and that's a great point, right? So, so we have to have... Um, we have to have the ability to go, okay, maybe there's certain things that I am overcoming that I'm not going to speak to until it's overcome, right? Like when I work, when I work with couples, I don't do it as much now that I'm not a pastor, but like when I counsel couples that are getting divorced, my answer to them was, this is a great opportunity to go live. Let's get it out there and help people right in the middle of your pain. That'd be terrible advice, right? That'd be terrible. No, 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 no. Yeah. Y'all are like, wow, you're the worst pastor I've ever known. I was saying it would be bad if I would have come back, right? But I would come back and say, you're five years removed from a nasty divorce. You found a new husband that, that adores you. Let's speak to some of that pain that you've overcome in the last five years. Because how many people are going through some of that pain right now that could really be inspired by, by your ability to overcome? Right? So, so there's going to be things like if, if, if I'm 100 grand in debt today, I'm not announcing that to Facebook. Right? And, and 
like that's a bad idea. But for my dad to be able to tell their testimony of in the 80s being $2 million in debt and refusing to file bankruptcy and paying off every penny, kind of a powerful story 15 years later. So yes, right? We, we've got to be able to leverage stories at the right moment so that we don't just look like, I'm just on the house, please help me. Right? That's probably not the look we want. But somebody's probably going to throw you a bone, right? If you yeah. did that, like you get, you, something would probably happen. So what else? Is there another question that stood out? Mine's a UVD. Okay. You, the unique value proposition. Mm -hmm. Just because you don't feel like you've had one up to now? Well, I don't think I've focused on it. Okay. You know, what makes me different than the other 8,000 quadrillion realtors? Yeah. You know, we all have big personalities. We're all people, you know. So that's what I'm going to focus on. I love it. Anything else? Yes, sir. Why do you do what you do? Why do you do what you do? Why? Can you tell us briefly for you what that looks like? No, I'm actively searching. I mean, it's funny that the question came up because I had that conversation with someone. I said, why, do, why am I doing it? Why am I doing it? Well, not, not that goober. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I want I want to have a passion project, and I don't have that. that yeah. Frustrates me. And but yet I don't want to be inauthentic and go look for some homeless camp and go, hey, sure, do work with me because I'm going to help these folks. You know, so I'm, I'm actually that's what I'm, I'm yeah I'm searching for. What is my passion? So let me try to help real fast. This this will help all of us. Sometimes our passion is an actual thing. And sometimes our passion is the vehicle. And, and what I mean by that is, like, my greatest passion in life is just loving on people. I did it for nine years as a pastor. I did it for three years in roofing. I did it for two years owning a website company. And now I've done it for a little over a year doing what I do now. And, and I struggled, right, because I thought my passion was being a pastor. Because that's how I don't, that's the only way I'd known to help people. And, and, it, and it took me a long time to go, wait a second. My passion is serving and loving people. My vehicle will continue to change, but my goal in life will not. And, and it just gave me permission, right? So that if one day I'm called to do something different, my vehicle will look different, but what I'm ultimately trying to accomplish will still be the same. And, and so just you know, be aware of that. That like we don't have like I was never passionate about roofing, <laughs> but I was passionate about what that allowed me the opportunity to do, right? But there are people out there, right? Like I know roofers that are pa like they're passionate about it, and they love shingles, and they you know like, like they love this stuff, right? And that's awesome, but that's that wasn't me. So I had to find it a different way. Okay. Well, was this helpful for you guys? Yes. yes. Okay, good. So I appreciate y'all being here. Uh, I don't know what, I, I usually pitch something that I sell, but I'm not going to because we're talking later about like what it could look like for this, for us to move forward and I get to work with you guys a lot. So I'm not gonna, I don't wanna offer anything that may or may not even be available to you guys for what I'm gonna offer it for. But I'm so grateful just for this opportunity, because I, I don't know all of you, but I love and trust this guy. And the fact that you're in this room says a lot, and, and you are capable of so much more than, than you've seen in your business up to this point. And so whatever hand I can have in helping your business increase this year, please reach out to me. I'm, I'm beyond happy. All right. Thank you.